are going to discuss the nasopulmonary drug delivery system so in this session we are going to discuss pulmonary drug delivery system so this is a disclaimer for the viewers in this session we are going to discuss factors affecting particle deposition as already we have discussed the lung anatomy and physiology and we found that the, the particle deposition how it is going to be sediment into the lungs that will decide the absorption of a drug from the lung so let us see the factors affecting particle deposition there are so many factors are there which are going to affect the particle deposition these factors are divided into the physico chemical and patient related factors and the pharmaceutical factors influencing the aerosol deposition in the case of physico chemical and patient related factors we are going to discuss the mucus barrier and uh, mucociliary clearance then alveolar clearance lung morphology then breath holding inspiratory flow rate that is ifr and tidal volume and the disease state in the case of uh, pharmaceutical factors we are going to discuss aerosol viscosity size and shape density and the physical stability so these are the few factors which are going to affect the particle deposition into the lung airway so let us see the each factor and how it is going to affect the particle deposition very first factor that is the mucus barrier and mucociliary clearance as you know that mucus is the first barrier which limits the direct penetration of molecules across the epithelial lining before being absorbed as you know that the mucus it is being secreted continuously on the epithelial lining and whatever formulation deposited into the lung airway it should cross the drug should cross this uh, mucus barrier so mucus is the first barrier which limits the direct penetration of molecule across the epithelial lining before being absorbed as you know that mucus it is a viscoelastic layer consisting of approximately 95% of water and inherently line the epithelial cells so mucus it is a visco elastic layer and it comprises 95% of water and it is lined to the epithelial cell the release of mucus may increase in a case of uh, external stimuli if there is any stimulus to the mucus release that will affect the absorption of a drug these external stimuli like a dust gases irritants smoke or a invasion by the microorganisms or airway diseases like asthma or the bronchitis which will affect the release of the mucus that is release of mucus it is going to be increased the thickness of mucus layer it is about 0.5 to 5 micrometer and varies based on a disease state and it becomes uh, up to 50 micrometer the thickness of the mucus layer it is going to be increased in the disease state mucus layer acts as a rate limiting step for the hydrophobic molecules 
such as the corticosteroids. As you know that mucus contains the 95% of water and it is hydrophilic in nature. So, it is going to act as a rate limiting step for the hydrophobic molecules such as a corticosteroid. It is a prominent barrier and prevents drug reaching to the target site in case of infection. If there is a infection, the mucus secretion, it is going to be increased and thereby it prevents or restrict the absorption of a drug into the target site. The mucolytic agents like uh, N-acetylcysteine, then uh, nisistiline, thymosin beta-4, etc. are used in the formulation to decrease viscosity of the mucus layer. Mucus produced does not remain stagnant at the epithelial lining as you know that the CDRs are present over there and which moves the mucus towards the throat but get constantly propelled along the airways by an organized rhythmic movement 1000 beats per minute that occurs towards the throat. So the mucus produced does not remain stagnant at the epithelial lining as globate cells are going to produce the mucus and but gets constantly propelled along the airways by an organized rhythmic movement that is 1000 beats per minute that occurs towards the throat. The propulsion is facilitated by beating of cilia present on the cells and their presence is a maximum at a TBR and absent at a AR. TBR means trachea bronchial region and AR means the alveolar region. Look at the figure. Suppose that the globate cell produce the mucus on the here it's a lining due to ciliary movement, ciliary movement mucus it is propelled towards the towards the throat so these are the globate cells which are going to produce the mucus isn't it so this is the mucus isn't it and here it's a direction of the mucus due to the ciliated cells towards the throat so this propulsion is facilitated by beating of cilia present on the cells and their presence is a maximum at a trachea bronchial region and absent at a alveolar region. Such a movement is significant in clearing trachea bronchial region from the particles and deposited formulation. The removal time may range from minutes to hours and depends on the thickness of mucus layer present during the stage which may be at a normal levels during the normal circumstances or be overloaded due to hyper secretion of mucus during the diseased condition. This mucus distribution also determines the deposition pattern of aerosol formulation. The localized deposition will occur in a patients with a severe disease such as a cystic fibrosis. So this is about the mucus barrier and the mucociliary clearance. Let us see the alveolar clearance. Like a mucociliary clearance, there is a alveolar clearance. For those particles that escape the upper respiratory tract and it is going to reach or deposit at the deep lung or alveolar region clearance occurs which is uh, aided by the alveolar macrophages. The alveolar macrophages are responsible for the clearance of the particles which are deposited into the alveolar region. The clearance mechanism include transport across the 
micociliary escalator phagocytosis by macrophages transcytosis or paracellular diffusion across epithelial layer by macrophages and intraalveolar degradation so these are the few mechanisms by which the particles are going to be cleared from the alveolar region that is the mucociliary escalator then the furthermore the phagocytosis by the macrophages then transcytosis or a paracellular diffusion the mucociliary escalator route is also a highly pursued one and involves transport via interstitium and lymphatic tissue to lymph nodes and finally to the blood stream so this is about the alveolar clearance let us see the lung morphology the highly branched morphology of the airways which gets increasingly smaller in diameter and length results in increasing impaction chances for the particles and also decreases the displacement needed for its surface contact to reach the alveolar region the particle must remain airborne and change direction across the successively decreasing branching tubes the highest deposition of particles will occur at the points that have the shortest average path length so this is about the lung morphology let us see the breath holding inspiratory flow rate and tidal volume these three parameters are related to the proper training and technique of the handling inhalation devices for maximizing therapeutic outcome and may vary from patient to patient the holding of breath at the end of inhalation capitalizes on the sedimentation propensity of the airborne particle in the airways and the recommended time is approximately 10 seconds an increase in a ifr that is inspiratory flow rate will increase the particle momentum and resulting turbulence at the proximal trachea bronchial region thus enhance the deposition of particles due to impaction at a trachea bronchial region and further lead to generation of aerosol with a smaller particle size the quantification of volume of air inhaled in the one breath is done by determining the tidal volume and an increase in that will thus result in a better penetration and deposition of the aerosolized particles to the trachea bronchial region and the alveolar region means we have to suppose to increase the tidal volume so as to that will increase the absorption of the drug as the breath holding inspiratory flow rate and tidal volume it is going to affect the particle deposition these are related to the proper training and technique of the handling inhalation devices for maximizing the therapeutic outcome and may vary from patient to patient the holding of breath at a, the end of inhalation capitalizes on the sedimentation propensity of the airborne particle in the airways and the recommended time for holding of breath is approximately 10 seconds an increase in a ifr that is inspiratory flow rate will increase the particle momentum and resulting turbulence at the proximal trachea bronchial region thus enhance the deposition of particles due to impaction at uh, trachea bronchial region and further lead to generation of aerosol with a smaller particle size the quantification of volume of air inhaled in a one breath is done by determining the tidal volume and an increase in that will thus result in a better penetration and deposition of the aerosolized particles to the trachea bronchial region and the alveolar region so this is about the breath holding 
inspiratory flow rate and tidal volume let us see the diseased state diseased state also affects the particle deposition the diseased state in the airways will directly impact the smooth flow of air across the different regions different regions that is a trachea bronchial region or alveolar region and its obstruction in the diseased state will result in a turbulence in the flow of particles and high air deposition at, at the trachea bronchial region more number of particles are going to be retained into the trachea bronchiolar region so this is about the diseased state let us see the aerosol velocity aerosol velocity it is going to affect the particle deposition the inspiratory process and a physiology of the lungs determine the velocity of uh, entrainment of the inspired particle from the inhaler and the nebulizers and their transport come deposition behavior across the regions of the respiratory tract the particle kinetics is a different in a case of metered dose inhalers as the particles are aerosolized with the velocity is higher than the inspiratory flow rate and consequently exhibit higher deposition in the oropharyngeal region let us see the density of the particle particle density is of 0.4 g per cm3 and physical diameter of 20 micrometer are the cut off limits for the efficient lung deposition aerodynamic diameter will be greater than the mean physical diameter for particles with a density less than 1 g per cubic centimeter and the density of particle prepared by spray or a freeze drying will be significantly less and hence density will be the less than 1 generally for the lung deposition the particle density is of 0.4 g cm3 and physical diameter of 20 micrometer are the cut off limit so this is about the density let us see the physical stability due to high concentration of particles in the theoretic aerosols they are often inherently physically unstable and such interactions are governed by interparticular forces of the attraction and the repulsion most of the time the exposure of a aerosol particle to the humid environment of airways may also lead to the hygroscopicity leading to increase in size due to aggregation and subsequent premature deposition at a trachea bronchi the region however this may not be the case with the particles delivered by aerosols or nebulizers as the solvent evaporation from the carrier system will leads to reduction in the size there is a complex interplay between the particle size and actual stability of the particles than that predicted at a ambient study condition or the in vitro condition so this is about the physical stability so here we we have finished the factors affecting the particle deposition